Now, another important factor that supports learning is the learning environment. Now, traditionally, this was framed around the physical space, uh, the type of school, was it a university or school or um, a workplace? But our understanding of learning environments has expanded considerably, not the least through the use of technology. A virtual environment, a virtual reality environment, can also be used now for learning, be that through video conferencing or through virtual reality environments and virtual spaces. So the concept of a learning environment has a range of characteristics. So there's the organizational structure. Is it a part of a school? Is it part of a university, a homeschooling environment? A whole range of different factors that relate to how it's organized. There's the structure of it. Is it very strict and rigid? Um, say in the military, where everyone learns exactly the same thing at exactly the same time, doing exactly the same activities, um, versus a very open structure, such as your own learning, or certain schools that have been set up with a very open community-based learning approach. Is it institutional or non-institutional, such as homeschooling? Does it have a schedule that has to be followed? Are there bells and lessons occurring at certain times? Or do the learning activities happen as the students wish them to happen? And they arrange and organize with teachers and other resources and activities to support their learning. Of course, that relates then to staffing. How is it staffed? Are there teachers? Are there um, teaching assistants? How many teachers are there? Is it just one teacher for 100 students? Or is there a much stronger uh, student-teacher ratio? Are there tutors and lecturers and teachers and all that sort of structure? So all of these things help frame the learning environment. Um, is attendance compulsory or is it optional? What requirements are there for the teachers? Can the teachers be from the community? Or they, do they require specialised training and certification? What sort of assessment is involved? Is there assessment? Is the assessment high stakes where it's going to um, determine whether or not someone gains employment or access to further courses? Or is it much less low stakes where it's simply there to guide students in their progress? Are there partnerships and mentorships and bringing in other experts from outside the learning community to support the learning and making it a more extended community? And what sort of organisational model is there? Is it a large, complex um, organisation such as many large universities? Or is it a small, intimate organisation such as a small primary school or one teacher school? And then there's the curriculum. Is it set externally? Is it decided upon by the teachers and educators? Or is it done collaboratively with the students? These all help frame the nature of the learning experiences and the learning environment in which they occur. Now, I provided you with three diagrammatic models to help you explore this. The first is the learning environment components model. And this has elements such as the resources available to support the learning, the people involved, the training and educational structures, the developmental practices involved in the learning, and the, the learning activities themselves. So have a look at that diagram and some of the different characteristics that represent learning in that instance. Then we've also got the highly effective learning environment um, list. <coughs> so here it just provides a list of things that would represent um, effective learning in a good um, learning environment, such as students being able to ask more questions than are being asked by the teachers. Um, are questions valued more than the answers and the process of asking questions rather than simply identifying facts? Where do the ideas come from? And can they come from a whole range of different sources? Can the students contribute ideas on what they're learning and how they learn? What sort of learning models are being used? Some of those pedagogies that you looked at in the concept map. How are they decided upon? Who decides how the learning actually occurs and how is it structured? And is there a variety? Um, and a range of other elements that you can uh, see in the list. Um, does the learning occur into the community or is it all done in an abstract, um, separated environment that we commonly call school or university? 
is assessment transparent and persistent and relevant and authentic? Does it actually have meaning or is it an abstract process of ranking students? What is the criteria for success in the learning? Is it for students to learn things that they're interested in? Or is it to learn particular elements that are then going to provide some sort of um, accreditation or credentialing? Gain a score so that they can determine whether or not they can get entry into a university course or to pursue further studies. And it, are the learning habits that are part of the philosophy of the environment, are they practiced by all involved? Are the teachers actively learning? Do they um, demonstrate through their actions what they expect students to demonstrate? And finally, is there constant and creative opportunities for practice and growth? Or is it much more around learning the theory and being assessed on the learning of the theory rather than um, growing as an individual and being able to express that um, growth through new capabilities as a result of their learning? So a few different approaches to think about in terms of the highly effective learning environment model. <coughs> and then we have the circular model. Um, in the middle, it focuses on student success, but it's very much aimed at developing a learning culture. So the learning environment enculturates practice. So the idea that it's inclusive and interconnected has a lot of flexibility and collaboration, all being supported by the leadership involved and the um, shared responsibilities um, evaluating what's happening and constant improvement. And as we get closer to um, the focus on the student success, is the curriculum being supported by a good, strong learning community, which is providing an effective learning environment, which improves the teaching quality and the learning quality that's occurring. So these are the things that help frame a learning environment. Now, you're learning about ChatGTP. How is the learning environment you are involved in supporting your learning of ChatGTP? Now, there's the university aspect of it and the structures that are in place to support your learning in this aspect, but there's also the learning environment you create for yourself. Where you learn, how you learn, when you learn. Do you learn with others? Do you seek support? Do you share your learning by the discussion forums? Do you seek support from those discussion forums? These are aspects of generating your learning environment and supporting your learning. 